Hi. Welcome back to the wonderful world of the scientific hypothesis. My name is Brad Alger, and in this video, we're going to consider the concept of negative data in science. Now, at first, this might seem like a counterintuitive idea, almost a self-contradiction. I mean, if it's data, how can it be negative? Obviously, this has nothing to do with negative numerical values, like let's say minus two, there's nothing controversial or bad about them. Instead, we'll see that the term negative data has been applied to several distinct kinds of scientific results. And we'll look into the ways that different ones affect scientific conclusions. Now, generally speaking, negative data and how they're handled are thought to cause problems for science. And while this can be true, the vagueness surrounding the term negative data itself creates confusion. As usual, we can't really solve a problem until we understand it. And so the purpose of this video is to sort out the different meanings of the term and to show how this clarification can lead to removing several of the difficulties that have been associated with it. Negative data and why they are important. First of all, we'll have to define them. What are negative data? A couple different things that have been referred to by this term. Why do they cause problems for science? And what can be done to avoid the problems? These are the issues we're going to tackle here. The most common problem with negative data nowadays seems to be something called the file drawer problem. So let's just look at what this is. Basically, the idea is that negative data are considered bad or inferior or undesirable. They are placed in a file drawer somewhere in the dark corner of a laboratory and forgotten about. Positive data, on the other hand, are considered the good stuff. They make their way into papers. This leads to journal articles, fame, and fortune, and so on. There are several major adverse consequences of the file drawer problem. The first and most obvious is that it causes a serious skew in the literature. Positive data are heavily overrepresented with respect to negative data. And this is especially unfortunate because, if anything, positive data are probably less commonly obtained in ordinary research work than negative data. The file drawer problem thus represents and fosters a disrespect for negative data, which is considered to be unimportant or uninformative. And this, as we'll see, is completely mistaken. And finally, the file drawer problem contributes to a misunderstanding of the scientific process because it makes it appear that only positive data are worth obtaining and therefore the only reason to do science is to obtain positive results. Well, what do we mean by negative data? Generally, these are unexpected or unpredicted results of a particular kind, specifically those that falsify a hypothesis, fail to replicate a previous finding, or are inconclusive or uninterpretable for some reason. Now, if you just look at these three classes, you can see that they represent very different kinds of information, and yet they're all lumped together as negative data. So to tease them apart, we'll look at them one at a time. Let's start with hypothesis testing. This is our by now familiar hypothesis testing machinery of science. This is where hypotheses go into the big hopper. They are then rigorously tested and sorted into bins of either falsified or not falsified hypotheses. But as I've mentioned earlier, falsifying hypotheses makes positive contributions to knowledge. This is not useless information. Falsified hypotheses are potential explanations that we know are inadequate and must be rejected. So this is very valuable information. Things are similar but a little bit different when it comes to replication attempts. This is where various findings from the literature are subjected to replication attempts, and they're sorted into bins of either not reproduced or reproduced, which is the same as saying not replicated or replicated. The accumulation of not replicated results is also a positive contribution to knowledge. However, this is a little bit different kind of knowledge than we got from testing hypotheses. The knowledge that we gain in a failed replication attempt is that there is something different about nature. Something is more complicated than we thought. There's some difference between the first experiment that was published and the second replication attempt. 
And that tells us that we have to go back and think more carefully about the situation, either the experimental situation or nature itself. But once again, a rigorous attempt and failure at replication is not useless information. Okay, and finally we have more ordinary experimental work in the laboratory. This is where we're taking a variety of, of inputs and subjecting them to different kinds of experiments. And the results we get out are neither positive nor negative. They're just uninterpretable or inconclusive. These kinds of results don't make any real contributions to knowledge. And this may in fact be useless information. By that I mean the results may have happened because of some problem specific to the laboratory. Maybe the equipment wasn't properly calibrated. The reagents were impure. The cells weren't the ones we thought they were. There's a whole huge list of reasons that experimental data uh, come out in this way. And it's not generally useful to the scientific community. In fact, I suggest that it shouldn't be considered data at all. And what are the bottom lines here? First, if the results are informative, they count as real data, they're not for the file drawer and they should be published. Negative data are solid, valuable results that were unexpected or unpredicted. This emphasizes the positive aspects of negative data. They either falsify a hypothesis or represent valid, failed replication attempts. If on the other hand, results are entirely uninformative, they are not even data and the file drawer is an okay place for them. These ideas have some corollaries. To change the culture regarding negative data, we can explicitly test hypotheses, do carefully controlled replication studies, and most importantly, publish the results and get negative data the respect that they deserve. Thanks for watching. Remember to give it a thumbs up if you like it and subscribe to hear more. See you next time.